Hello, my name is Samantha. Welcome to my channel. I am here in my bed today. It's been a really long time since I have made a video from the comfort of my bed, and so I figured why not? I really love sitting in my bed all the time. It's fantastic. This bed is new. It's the one that we got when we moved here because uh, we actually upgraded to a king bed, which is super fun. I always wanted a king bed because I had hot flashes and sleeping next to Grey was literally the worst thing ever whenever like I would have a hot flash and I would feel any body heat coming from him. It would be like awful. Um, so I was like, if I have a king bed, I can just roll all the way over to the other side. I don't even have to be anywhere near him. But now I don't have hot flashes anymore, so I don't really need the king bed, but it's still nice. It's still nice. Let's like get on topic, shall we? Tomorrow when I post this, I'll be 23 weeks pregnant. Um, I thought that I would do a little first trimester recap, kind of explain the symptoms that I had in the first trimester. I watched tons of videos like this when um, I was in the first trimester, and now I've been watching videos about the second trimester and the third trimester just to kind of get an idea of what I could possibly be experiencing. Um, so yeah, I just thought I would uh, come on here and share my experience. I have this little book that I was kind of using as like a journal um, to document some things. I have really stopped using it. I don't I don't use it anymore. <laughs> yeah, I stopped using this in May and then I started keeping track of symptoms on my phone and that's kind of where I've been since. I do have like my cycle tracking thing on here if you're interested in that. I saw people do that so I was like I want to do that. That looks fun. Anyway, let's get on to this video. So I made a video a little while back talking about my pregnancy symptoms that I had before I missed my period. Um, so today I'm just going to be talking about the rest of the first trimester, basically from when I knew I was pregnant to the end of the first trimester, what were the symptoms I experienced. So I'm just going to kind of go through this journal and explain the things that I wrote down and what things that I remember and I have absolutely no other plan. So we'll see how this video turns out. Okay, so I'm going to start around four weeks. So around four weeks, the main symptom that I had that was like the biggest issue was that I was just starving all the time. Um, I would wake up in the morning really really hungry and it was just so rare for me to be hungry in the morning because I'm not usually a person that eats breakfast. Um, other symptoms that I noticed were um, sore breasts and mild cramping so um, I guess it's just super normal to experience cramping especially at the very beginning of your pregnancy so I kind of just felt cramping for a while and my breasts were just like so sore and then they just kept getting more and more sore. I, I did write down I have felt slightly nauseous sometimes but I think it's just because I feel hungry all the time especially in the morning and I have noticed that I have been getting irritated so easily and yeah I remember that especially from the beginning. I think honestly it has continued throughout the rest of the pregnancy but I remember it being such a big deal then because it was just so different from what I normally was feeling and now I just like kind of have gotten a little bit more used to controlling that but still not great at it. <laughs> I noticed that like right when I woke up I kind of felt like I wanted to eat like a big breakfast with protein but if I didn't have that, um, like I would go to work in the morning and I would just bring peanut butter crackers with me because there's no way I'm waking up early enough to make myself a big breakfast, let's be real. Um, so I would bring like peanut butter crackers with me and I would be able to eat like three of them and then I would feel like I was full. So it would feel like I wanted to eat this entire huge breakfast, but I would eat three peanut butter crackers and I would be done. And then later, like an hour later, I would feel like I wanted to eat again. And then I would eat the rest of the peanut butter crackers because there were six that came in like the little pack and then I would be full. So it was weird because I felt kind of like I was hungry all the time, but I couldn't actually eat like a normal amount of food. I could only eat like little bits of food. And so that's why I was thinking like, oh, I could be feeling like a little bit of nausea or something. but. The nausea that I was feeling was not super intense and it kind of just felt like I was a little bit hungry all the time. Anytime I did eat like a big breakfast with like eggs and bacon, I felt so much better for the rest of the day. So like 
clearly I needed to like listen to my body a lot more and just eat those things that I was really craving and I just felt like so much better when I did that. So five weeks, I basically said I have the exact same symptoms, hungry, sore breasts, cramping on and off. The other thing that I noticed is that I was having trouble with sleeping a little bit. I'm one of those people who wakes up, first of all, I wake up for everything. Like I, I notice every movement or like if there's any noise or anything, I will wake up for it. But I am very good usually at falling back asleep after that. I'm like, okay, I figured out what that noise was. It's over, like I can go back to sleep. I don't have a problem. But I started having the problem of going back to sleep. Like I couldn't get back to sleep as easily and it was super annoying because I did have to start getting up to pee in the middle of the night um, a little bit more. I said here that I actually got up to pee like one or two times a night. I don't really remember that, so it must have really been only that week because now I'm pretty sure I really only get up to pee once a night and that's kind of how it's been since I got pregnant. Uh, with Q meowing in the morning because she likes to be our alarm clock and with me waking up for going to the bathroom, I just like couldn't fall asleep as easily and like I was just having a little bit of trouble sleeping. So I was having um, some fatigue, um, but I don't really know if it's because it was from pregnancy or if it was because I wasn't sleeping. <laughs> so I mentioned here that the nausea hit me right at six weeks. That's when I really needed to make sure that I ate um, every so often. Um, and then if I did that, I usually felt fine. If I didn't do that, I kind of felt a little bit nauseous. I wrote, I haven't thrown up yet, and I don't think I will because I didn't throw up through all of chemo, but it comes in waves that vary in severity and it's not usually too bad. Sometimes it'll feel pretty bad, but it's only really intense for five or 10 minutes. Oh yeah, I remember that. Like around six weeks, I would be like, you know, at work working and I would feel like, pretty sick, but it would last five minutes and then it would just completely go away. It was the weirdest thing. This happened at seven weeks also. Like, it was so weird. I would just start to feel really nauseous for like five minutes and it would go away. And it wasn't even that bad nausea. And it was kind of, it just kind of felt like, oh my gosh, like I kind of feel sick right now and I don't want to eat. I actually didn't want to eat during those like five to 10 minutes of feeling sick. Um, and then it would just go away and I would be completely fine. And it was so weird. <laughs> what I do remember is my nausea starting to get worse around eight weeks. Eight weeks is when we had our first ultrasound of our baby. That's when we started telling our friends and family. And I remember like going and seeing them and they were like, do you not feel sick? Like, why don't you feel really sick? And I was like, I mean, I, I kind of feel sick. Um, I do kind of feel nauseous, but like I said in my other video, um, I just don't think that it was that big of a deal for me because I was so used to feeling nauseous because on my cancer meds that I took for two years straight, I felt nausea every single day for two years basically. And it would be worse on my on weeks on the medicine. And then like obviously before I did that medication, I had chemo and that nausea was even more intense than that. So I was like really used to being nauseous. So this kind of nausea was just not as bad as that. So I'm kind of like a bad person to ask about this because my comparison is like extreme, I guess. Um, but I never threw up and I know some people can throw up. So I don't think I really had nausea too bad. I'm, I'm also just not the kind of person that throws up. Like I will go on feeling sick and I just won't throw up, which can be good or bad because I know a lot of people are like, oh, I feel way better after I throw up and I just never can throw up, so I continue feeling bad. Um, but yeah, honestly, like my nausea wasn't horrible. It was after I told like all my friends and family and they were all like, why aren't you feeling sick? Um, kind of after that is when I started to feel a little bit more sick and that nausea was kind of like at that intensity from like weeks 8 to 10 and after that I was kind of back to normal and some things would make me sick, um, some things would make me gag, but um, I didn't really have that kind of conscious, uh, constant in the background nausea that I had 
from weeks eight to 10. All through this time, I still had really sore breasts and I started wearing a bra at night to sleep. I, I don't do every night anymore. In the second trimester, it got better. Um, but in that first trimester, I had really, really sore breasts and I needed something to hold them up while I was even sleeping, which is weird because I didn't usually have to do that, but I did. And so then for fatigue, because I definitely was feeling pretty tired, I think around seven weeks is when my fatigue started setting in. It was the nausea first and then the fatigue came after that. I think the fatigue was the worst around 10 weeks, but I think that might have also been when we were doing a lot of traveling, so it's also hard to say. And then around 12 weeks, I did feel a lot better. Um, I felt not as nauseous. I felt not as fatigued. I came out of the first trimester feeling great. And then the second trimester kind of just hit me. Everyone says like that the second trimester is the easiest trimester, but I honestly think that the beginning of the second trimester for me was harder than the whole first trimester, so. So that'll be an interesting video when I get to that. I'll do a second trimester recap when I get out of the second trimester and kind of give you some more symptoms that I felt during the second trimester. But basically that's all I have for the first trimester. It really wasn't that eventful. I know there are other videos on YouTube that people have way more problems in the first trimester and I honestly think that I got off pretty easy. It was not um, horrible. I was just kind of just excited and I was pretty anxious also before I had my appointment so I had to wait until my eight week appointment to be able to see the baby and to see if um, everything was going okay and that caused some anxiety for me. Like I was really wanting to be able to see the baby and then be able to tell friends and family just so everybody knew. And I could have told friends and family earlier, we just really wanted to see the baby first. Hey, what's up? I'm editing right now. I'm still in bed. Here's Q. Um, I don't know why I didn't think about putting this in the video. Um, and I don't know why it wasn't written in that journal, but the entire first trimester a big symptom that I had was headaches. Like it was something that I dealt with like, I don't know, probably starting like week six and on. I would get migraines um, and headaches and I just never used to get headaches that bad. And they were super, super annoying. They've calmed down a lot now, but yeah, that was a really big symptom. Honestly, like the fatigue, the nausea, they were annoying and bad, but they were nothing compared to what I had been dealing with for the previous two or three years, depending on how you count all of my medication. And also the fact that I was experiencing these symptoms because I knew that I was pregnant and that I was going to be having a baby, it made like all of it worth it. And I, I honestly just didn't care. I was like, you know, before with cancer, it's kind of like, okay, you feel sick because you're on chemo and the chemo is killing the cancer. So like, you gotta be grateful for that, right? That like, the chemo is like doing the things that your body needs it to do so that you can live. So yeah, that was awesome. Um, but the hormone therapy where I was already no evidence of disease and I didn't know if the hormone therapy was even doing anything at all, or if it was just making me sick and causing side effects that could become permanent and bad, um, that was not the best thing uh, for, for me um, mentally to think about all the time. So the pregnancy nausea was, I think I said this in my last video, it was positive nausea. It was nausea that I was feeling because something good was happening. I was growing a baby inside me. I did not have it too hard and I'm very thankful for that. So yeah, if you have any questions about anything, leave them in the comments and share your pregnancy experience in the comments. I love reading your guys' stories about when you were pregnant or like if you are pregnant now. So yeah, um, if you wanna check out my vlog channel with my husband, uh, there is a link in the description and also it should be on the screen. And yeah, that's all, bye.